Hello guys and welcome to Vatsim Emergencies. First of all, I just want to appreciate all the feedback as always. It is really awesome guys, so keep it up. Drop a comment below if you feel for it, just smash the like button. I really appreciate it. But now, let's get into business. Today we'll face a rapid decompression during our cruise towards London. A decompression of the airplane at any time is a dangerous situation, but especially above 10,000 feet. As we climb higher and higher, the air density decreases more and more. What this means is that there are fewer air molecules per volume, which is to our advantage because it reduces drag load on the aircraft, making us able to fly faster in relation to the ground. But the disadvantage of decreasing the air density is that we humans need sufficient oxygen to be able to breathe normally. At 10,000 feet everyone can breathe normally, but above this altitude we will suffer from hypoxia, a Latin word where hype means less than normal and oxygen means oxygen. So in other words, we will above 10,000 feet lack from oxygen. If we encounter hypoxia, there will be a great chance that we wouldn't even notice, because when our brain lacks oxygen, it won't function properly, making us very confused and fatigued. In the end, our brain will shut down the body by making it sleep until higher levels of oxygen is restored. On the overhead panel, we can observe the pressurization dial. The inner dial tells us the altitude of the cabin, and the outer dial tells us the differential pressure between outside and inside altitude. If the cabin altitude exceeds 10,000 feet, an alarm is triggered, which we can silence by pushing this button next to the pressurization dial. This button is placed here to ensure that the pilots are aware that it is the pressurization system which activated the bell. Further to the right, the pressurization system is controlled. The pressurization system can be controlled automatically and manually. When the pressurization system is automatically controlled, we just have to tell the system our cruise height initially and our landing altitude prior to the descent. The system will optimize the pressurization by getting the lowest cabin altitude to ensure highest comfort, which is achieved by pushing the differential to its limit. This is also why it is very violent if a leak occurs. If the automatically system fails, an alternative is provided as a backup. We can also take over 100% manual control and change the cabin altitude by opening and closing the outflow valve manually. If the cabin altitude exceeds 10,000 feet, we pilots must apply oxygen mask. However, we can control the amount of oxygen coming into our mask by turning on up. It can either provide 100% oxygen or mix it with the air from the cabin, which depends on the situation. If the cabin altitude exceeds 14,000 feet, the passenger oxygen mask will deploy automatically. These masks contain approximately 12 minutes of oxygen, which means that we have a margin of 12 minutes today to get our passengers down at a breathable altitude. Without further ado, let's jump on board on North Shoal 61 as we fly above Germany routing for the UK. Holy, much caution has been triggered, we'll just look at the FO site. Overhead and air conditioning warning, so it seems like we have lost the cabin pressure. Yeah, the differential is coming to zero, cabin altitude is rising as well. So to protect ourselves against hypoxia, we've just done the oxygen mask, setting the regulator to provide 100% oxygen at this time. Before we'll take any further action, we'll just make sure our passengers are strapped in, so we'll flick on the signal signs. Now we'll pull up the quick reference handbook, looking down on the quick action index. The first page of the Q&A, we see rapid decompression on page 2.1. Condition. One or more of these occurs, a cabin altitude exceedance that checks, so we will execute the checklist, down oxygen mask and set regulators to 100%. That is done. Establish crew communications, check. Pressurization mode selector, we will set that to manual, so looking up here in the overhead. Manual, outflow valve switch, holding close until outflow valve indicates fully closed. If cabin altitude is not controllable, passenger signs to arm, we've already done that. If the cabin altitude exceeds or is expected to exceed 14,000 feet, uh, it has, so passenger's oxygen switch will affect that to on. It has already done that by itself, but will do it as well. Next step, go to emergency descent checklist on page 0 0.1. Condition, one or more of these occur, the cabin altitude cannot be controlled when the airplane is above 14,000 feet. That's affirmative. Point 1. Announce the emergency descent. The pilot flying will advise the cabin crew on the PA system of impending rapid descent. The pilot monitoring will advise ATC and obtain the area altimeter setting. 
Today we have the honor of both being the captain and the first officer, so we'll just initiate by turning on to the PA system. Cabin crew, prepare for emergency descent. And now we'll contact ATC. Mayday, 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 North Shoal 619, we have had a rapid decompression requesting emergency descent to fly level 100. North Shoal 619, that is copied, descent flight level 110, please repeat the flight level you have told me. Requesting descent to flight level 100, 100, North Shoal 619. North Shoal 619, that's copied, rapid descent to flight level 100 is the crew. Rapid descent to flight level 100, North Shoal 619. We've entered 10,000 feet in the MCP using a level change feature to send to obtain the maximum rate of descent. Okay, Ferals are moving to idle here and we'll extend the speed brakes to achieve more drag, allowing us to descend faster. And we'll just monitor the plane, everything looks good, we are descending and the speed is good as well. Starters, they can come in to continuous. So, we'll continue with the QH. Point 2. Passenger signs, they are on. Without delay, descend to lowest safe altitude at 10,000 feet, whichever is higher. There are no mountains in the vicinity, so we'll just descend to 10,000 feet. Engine start switches, both to continuous. Check. Thrust levers, both. Reduce thrust to minimum or as needed for anti ice. We do not use anti ice, so throttles are enable. Speed brake is raised to flight descent. If structural integrity is in doubt, limit speed as much as possible and avoid high maneuvering loads. Because we are in doubt of the integrity of the plane, we will not increase our speed to the maximum operating speed, but just keep it a bit lower. Continue in the next page. Today we are flying the 737-800 with winglets, so neither of the caution we will pay attention to. Step 8. When approaching the level off altitude, smoothly lower the speed brakes lever to the down descent and level off, add thrust and stabilize on altitude and airspeed. The rest we will cover later when appropriate. Once again we will just get a quick overview of our situation. We have declared an emergency due to rapid decompression of the cabin and are executing an emergency descent. Because we are in this emergency we will set our score code to 7700. Throttles are closed, speed brake are in flight descent, engine instruments are showing idle thrust. We are descending with 4300 feet per minute which is pretty good and with some quick math we can calculate that we will be at 10,000 feet in approximately 5 minutes. Now that we have changed our altitude from 36,000 feet to 10,000 feet, we'll just enter it in the FMC, which allows us to use VNAV at our new cruise altitude, and execute. Now, so the 69er, uh, want to land the nearest airport, or do you want to stay at flight level 100 uh, for a short time? Stand by for North Shuttle 61 we definitely want to divert to an alternative airport in this case and the first thing I'll check is our gross weight and see if it is within limits at this time to execute a safe landing. Currently we have a gross weight of 63.1 tons and we have a maximum landing weight of 66.4 tons so we are within limits. When we filed our flight plan we entered Bremen as one of our alternative destinations in case we have to divert. If we toggle the airport feature in the EFIS panel we see that Bremen or Echo Delta Delta Whiskey is pretty nearby. Northshell 619 requesting diversion to Bremen Airport. 619, that is copied. Turn left, heading 150. Left 150 for Northshell 619. That's set, so we will engage the heading select and observing that the plane is turning towards 150 degrees. We'll now reprogram the FMC and set our destination airport to Bremen instead of Gatwick as original planned. Just confirming the ICAO, Echo Delta Delta Whiskey. And execute. We now receive a warning that we are using reserve fuel because it thinks that we are going to fly the entire route to Gatwick and then head back to land at Bremen. For the time we will not worry about it because we can't override the route with anything yet. The transition altitude in Bremen is 5000 feet. We will just go in the FMC and check that it has been programmed correctly and it looks good to me. So. Normally we would enter the landing altitude and pressurization panel by now, but because a leak has occurred, the cabin is not pressurized, thus it makes no difference. Now that we are talking about pressure of the cabin, we will just take a quick look on the pressurization dials to see what they tell. We see that the cabin rate is decreasing, which it does because the plane is descending. The differential is yet at zero, telling us that the cabin is not pressurized the least. 
This makes sense because the current altitude is 20,000 feet and the cabin altitude is showing 20,000 feet as well. No, so if you pick one nine, I can't take Bremen radar on one two four, that's small eight zero. Bye bye. Bring radar on one two four, that's small eight zero for no shield six one nine. Bye bye. So we'll just dial in the frequency of one two four, that's small eight zero. Bring radar, no shield six one nine with you through flight level one seven five for flight level one hundred and heading one five zero. Now shuttle 619, Bremen radar, good evening, identified, um, continue to film heading, expect priority, and please report out of emergency. Now shuttle 619, due to decompression of the cabin, we have executed a rapid descent. Now shuttle 619, copy, do you need any emergency services on ground? Only medical assistance for the time, now shuttle 619. Now shuttle 619, copy, uh, continue descent out of altitude 3000 feet, turn 1018. Expect vectors file if approaching runway 09. Down to 3000 feet on QNH 1018, expecting ILS 09. No shuttle 619, thank you. Now, sir, 619, can you confirm you are able to vacate the runway after landing? That's affirmative for no shuttle 619. Now, sir, 619, thank you very much. Now that we know our landing runway, we'll brief the arrival. Today we have diverted to Bremen Airport due to loss of pressure in the cabin. We will arrive via the ILS runway 09. Bremen Airport has an elevation of 14 feet and a minimum sector altitude of 2,100 feet in a 25 nautical mile circle around Bremen VOR. The ILS frequency is 110.3 and a course of 087 degrees. So we'll just enter the frequency 110.3 and switches to the active. Do the same for the first officer's radio 110.3 and flick it to active. The course was 087 degrees and we will set that in both as well. Perfect. We're closing in on 10,000 feet at this time, so we'll head back and continue with the QH. Step 8. When approaching the level off altitude, smoothly lower the speed brakes lever to the down descent and level off. Add thrust and stabilize in altitude and airspeed. We will not level off as initially expected, but continue our descent down to 3000 feet. Therefore, we will skip this step. Step 9. Crew oxygen regulators to normal. Flight crew must use oxygen when cabin altitude is above 10,000 feet. To conserve oxygen, move the regulator to normal. So we will just move the regulators to normal. Number 10. Engine start switches both as needed. In this case, we will just let them stay in continuous because we will land shortly. 11. The new course of action is based on weather, oxygen, fuel remaining and available airports. Use of long range crews may be needed. We have chosen to divert to Bremen and we have sufficient amount of fuel to do so. If we take a quick look on the overhead, we see that the cabin altitude is just about to cross 10,000 feet. Just to be on the safe side, we as pilot will keep on our oxygen mask for the time being. But we can advise the cabin that they are able to breathe normally again and it is safe to remove the oxygen mask. Cabin crew and passengers, oxygen mask are no longer needed. Normally we must not fly faster than 250 knots below flight level 100, but because we have declared an emergency, we are allowed to violate these restrictions if it is critical. Now that we have the situation under control and our passengers can breathe normally again, we will reduce the speed to obey the restriction. To enhance our situational awareness, I will just program the approach in FMC so we can see it in the ND. We are now able to override the route to London and get rid of the warning using reserve fuel and copy the final approach fix in the scrap patch and pasting it as the next waypoint. If we now go to the progress page, we see that we have 5.1 tons of fuel when arriving at Bremen Airport, which is plenty. Now that we are messing with the FMC, we can just as well set our VREV speed for today's landing. Again, we'll just cross check that we are within landing weights, which looks good. We'll just do a normal flap 30 landing, which gives us a V-Rest speed of 146 knots. North shuttle 619, left 120, cleared ILS approach runway 09. Left 120, cleared ILS 09 for North 619. Well, now we are busy. We have not finished our arrival briefing yet, and the aircraft is not fully configured for landing either. If we take a look at the ND, we see that we are approximately 20 nautical miles from the localized interception, but we should be at least configured for flaps 1. On the chart, there is a caution to us. Parts of IFR profiles within airspace class E. Watch out for VFR traffic unknown to ATC. 
Moving down to the profile, we will capture the glide slope at 3000 feet at Banix, which is approximately 9.2 dme from the RLS. We will descend down to a decision altitude of 99 feet barrel or 86 feet radial. We will just insert the barrel decision altitude of 99 feet. If we have to go mist, we will climb straight ahead to Hotel India Gulf MDB, routed to Bremen BUR climbing 3000 feet. The runway in Bremen is 2040 meters in length and 45 meter wide. After touchdown, we will vacate left when able, and that pretty much covers the arrival briefing. Because other things were prioritized higher, we have not done the 10,000 feet flow yet, which we will do now. Lights are on, cabin crew notified, and the starters are in continuous. We will further deaccelerate to flap up metering speed, but if you have a look on the ND, we see that the green arc is still way behind the localizer course, and the speed is still way high. Both of these are bad indications. We'll deal with it by asking for delay vectors, giving us some extra distance prior to the RLS interception, which we will use to be fully configured. It is better to do this now, instead of going around later on the approach, which would cost even more time. No shuttle 619, we are way too high and fast for the approach, requesting delay vectors. No shuttle 619, no problem, turn right heading 140. Right heading 140, no shuttle 619. Now that we are way below 10,000 feet, and for certain can breathe without the help of oxygen mask, we will take the time to remove them. Even though Bremen offers a relatively long runway, I'll use auto brake setting 3, just in case we float on the flare or for any other reason do not touch down on point. I would very much appreciate not to go around on this one. Another smart thing to discuss is malfunctions. If we check the recall, the only thing which is malfunctioning is the cabin pressure. But because this is an isolated system, it has no other effects on the airplane's durability. Therefore, there are no concerns of today's landing, apart from our passengers who have to be checked by medical personnel after landing. Now that the speed finally has decreased to flaps up metering speed, we'll call for flaps 1, moving the speed bug along to flaps 1 metering speed. Another thing we can do in advance is to set the tower frequency in the standby. Bremen Tower is on frequency 120.32 today. Confirm right turn to 060 for North Shoulder 619. Roger right heading 060, clear LS09 for North Shoulder 619. Initially, we'll just turn the knob towards a heading which is to the right of us. Because if we set the heading of 060 degrees at this time, the plane will make a left turn because that's the shortest way. We'll therefore gradually have to turn the knob until 060 is less than 180 degrees to the right of us. We're just about to roll out on a heading of 060 and are awaiting the localizer to come alive. Furthermore, we have reduced the speed appropriate for a flap setting of 5. Now that we are both back on altitude and speed, we can retract and arm the speed brake preparing for landing. Looked on the 36, 10 altitude, 5000 feet, turn at 118. Coming in on 3000 feet, which is the altitude we'll capture the glide slope at. Just slowing down the descent rate a bit, trying to make a continuous descent and not level off prior to glide slope capture. To get a better and clearer view outside, we can turn off the cockpit lighting. As long as the flat light is on, we can see all of the buttons in the cockpit. There we go, localizer is alive. Expediting the descent rate a little again. Just playing with it to see what will work. That seems fairly right. Localizer is one dot to the left of us and is coming in. And we have a localizer capture as indicated in the FMA. And the plane is making a nice and smooth turn to the right to intercept the localizer. Checking the ILS radio is tuned correctly, identifier is India Bravo Romeo Echo, that's crush checked. Localizer has been captured on point, arming the approach, allowing it to follow the vertical guidance. And we have flight slope capture, flaps 15 gear down, speed bug to flaps 15 metering speed. German wings 203, 4 turn left heading 270, we can altitude 5000 feet, turn edge 1018. Gear indicating 3 green, flaps indicating 15. Now that we are following the ILS path, we can set the go around altitude of 3000 feet. Checked. Crossing 3000 feet, setting the landing flaps 30. 
we were for 146 knots, if we add 5 knots to that, we have our approach speed of 151 knots. Bremen Tower on 2032, North Shield 619, I think. So we will flick that into the active. Bremen Tower, North Shield 619, with you on the Alice 090. North Shield 619, Bremen Tower, good evening. Wind 080 degrees, 4 knots, runway 09, clear to land. 09, clear to land for North Shield 619. So everything should be set and we will execute the landing checklist. Speed brake, armed, green light. Landing gear, down, 3 green. Flaps, 30, green light. Landing checklist complete. In case of a go around, climb straight ahead to Bremen NDB, then right turn to Bremen VOR, climbing to 3000 feet. Disconnecting the autopilot, I have control. And the auto throttle as well. Just making minor correction to line up as best as I can. Watching my speed while following the flight director, looking outside for visual reference as well. At 20 feet, I'll bring the throttles to idle and pitch a little up to flare. We are a little to the right of the set line, banging slightly left. Looks good. Here comes minimums. Continue. Throttle to idle and pitching. Oh, a little too much there, pitching just slightly down again. And we are down. Speed break ups and reverses. Don't seem to respond. There they are, now going full reverse to compensate. De accelerating. 80 knots. Out of reverse, manual brake. Ooh, what a ride, but once again we are safely down on the ground with all our passengers safe and sound. Hope you enjoyed what you saw in today's episode, if you did, please be so kind and leave a thumbs up. I'm using a lot of time putting these together for you, but for some awesome feedback it is definitely worth the time. And of course, as always, if you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. But that about does it, thank you for watching guys, and if you haven't seen my previous episode yet, you can click on the screen now.